This is a story about strategic land acquisition and why we do it. It's a story about a very special place and why we are working to help preserve and protect it. The Shiawassee Basin is home to the headwaters of the Shiawassee River that begins near Davisburg and flows northerly to Saginaw Bay. It's truly an ecological gem of southeast Michigan, featuring rare and varied landscapes. If this rare landscape could speak for itself, what stories would it tell? I would probably start by telling the story of how I am a very special place and how I was carved out by glaciers thousands of years ago. I would tell the story of the resulting glacial landforms and the very special ecosystems that exist here. I would talk about how I am home to prairie fens that exist due to the calcium-rich groundwater that flows up through my soil, and how my thick vegetation and soil purify surface water as it recharges our aquifers. My prairie fens are a rare feature and a host to a complex ecosystem. My special fen is one of the few places known to exist where a small butterfly is struggling to survive and avoid extinction. The face of my basin changes over the seasons. My serene and pure white snow-covered wetlands melt away in the spring and give rise to skunk cabbage, marsh marigolds, and lady slippers. Trillium and mayapple emerge from the floor of my wooded uplands. Pitcher plants and shrubby sankfoil begin to reveal themselves in my fens. At sunrise in the spring, the ground fog hugs my basin like a thick, white scarf. As summer arrives, I've changed into a lush, verdant pathway for the Shiawassee River, surrounded by uplands, populated by oaks and hickory. Joe pie weed and goldenrod bedecked with dewdrop laden webs decorate my wetlands. The late summer and fall bring swaths of colors and a cloak of special beauty for a period before I remove it and embrace the solitude and serenity of the winter months, waiting for the cycle to begin again. I would talk about how my lowlands and uplands are home to so many species of birds and other flora and fauna that sometimes I lose track of them all. Sandhill cranes arrive in early spring and begin to build nests and raise their young in my wetlands. They share the space with constantly chattering red-winged blackbirds, swamp sparrows, and song sparrows that nest among the grasses and reeds and occasionally emerge to sing, perhaps to attract a mate or maybe just for the joy of it. Tree swallows with their brilliant metallic blue coats glisten in the sunlight, soar, and dive over my wetlands. Many species of colorful wood warblers pass through on their way to breeding grounds and grace me with their beautiful songs and colorful plumage. Some species choose to stay all summer. Others move on. They are easily seen before my woodland canopy fully leafs out in late spring, forming a blanket of green in all directions. Majestic great blue herons glide over me nest high in my canopy and feed at my small ponds and kettle lakes. The rose-breasted grosbeak with its beautiful voice echoes through my upland woods. A pair of trumpeter swans decides to make a home here. Eastern kingbird, green heron, belted kingfisher, great egret, pileated woodpecker, and so many others call me home. I'm also home to mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and insects. White-tailed deer run through my lowlands and uplands and raise their young here. Slow-moving blanding turtles with their bright yellow necks sun themselves on a fallen log in one of my ponds. Dragonflies with lace-like wings shimmer in the bright summer sun. 
There are many species of butterflies, monarchs, swallowtails, fritillaries, and skippers. My special butterfly, the Pawashik skipperling, is so rare that it's found in only a few spots on the planet. Such a wealth and variety of life I support. I would talk about our relationship with each other, how we, you and I, along with the other flora and fauna, are a part of a much larger whole. I would talk about how we're connected and dependent on each other. These bonds must surely resonate with you in an elemental way as you walk my land, look in wonder at my beauty, breathe in my scents, listen to my voices, and come away renewed. North Oakland Headwaters Land Conservancy is here to protect the land. Right now we have a unique opportunity to preserve the source of a very special valley that contains both rare wetland called a fen and rare upland called an oak barren. Our campaign to raise funds to buy this land will keep it from being developed. It is critical habitat for the Powashik skipperling butterfly, home to the gentle but threatened Blandings turtle, and a refuge for the federally endangered Massasauga rattlesnake. The striking views from the hilltop is a very tempting spot for private development. We want to keep this beautiful spot in its natural state to help save the skipperling butterflies from going extinct. There are only two to three hundred left in the wild. The help of many donors will let nature's voice ring out loud and clear far into the future. Thank you in advance for your donation and support of this very important project.